Good afternoon, Hudson County View, live and uncut. And uh, John R. Heides here to bring you the latest and greatest in Hudson County news. So, without further ado, on Monday, we saw U.S. Senator Bob Menendez at the Union City Post Office where he took aim at President Donald Trump and his administration over changes that are going on with the U.S. Postal Service. So, there's been some developments since then. So, we're going to tell you what happened Monday and more. We're also going to talk a little bit about what happened with the New Jersey Supreme Court, specifically what happened with the Civilian Complaint Review Board based out of Newark. So there was a, it was a mixed decision. It wasn't uh, definitive to the Newark Fraternal Order Police or to the city of Newark, but uh, the outcome is a lot of people upset. So for those of you that haven't had a chance to read up, we're gonna clue you in on what happened there. We're also gonna talk about the Suez water debacle in Jersey City, which uh, impacted the early part of people's weekend last week. So we're gonna to certainly touch on that. And we're also going to have a conversation today about the Hoboken City Council last uh, meeting last night. And that was another long one, over four and a half hours. But of course, the main topic there was about the $250 fine for face masks. You guys are probably well aware already that it did not pass. But we're going to give you the particulars and we're going to break everything down for you. We are also probably going to talk about a recycling contract in Jersey City worth $77.5 million over the next five years. And uh, interestingly, the council approved that after approving an emergency agreement last month, and there was only one bid that entered in this particular uh, service contract. So all that and more, but first we're gonna take a quick break from one of our sponsors. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. The Jersey City Medical Center. You know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub with health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center, here to help you with your healthy, here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center, visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. Hudson County View, live and uncut, John R. Highness. So as I just mentioned a couple minutes ago, we're gonna talk about the New Jersey Senior Senator Bob Edd is taking aim at Donald Trump over the changes at the United States Postal Service. So he headed over to his uh, home city of Union City on Monday morning, and uh, he addressed about a dozen members of the media talking about these recent changes and what impact or impacts that they would have on uh, the November 3rd general election, where, of course, President Trump will be taking on former Vice President Joe Biden. So with that in mind, Let's take a look at uh, what the senator had to say here. He said, if the administration continues down this path of defunding the Postal Service, our democracy and economy will suffer. Families, small businesses, and thousands of frontline postal workers will be put in harm's way. And it's not an exaggeration to say that innocent people will get hurt. Uh, you guys probably noticed if you were able to watch the video, which streamed live on our Facebook page, he was joined by Hudson County Executive Tom DeCheese, Sheriff Frank Shaleri, Assemblyman Raj McKerji, and New Jersey State Association of Letter Carriers President Richie O'Connell Jr. So in particular, Menendez took aim at some things that Trump said on Fox News last week. And in that specific uh, statement that he took umbrage with was, if we don't make a deal, that means they don't get the money. That means they can't have universal mail-in voting. They just can't have it. And uh, that was something he was reading off a red and blue sign next to the podium. And again, those were President Trump's remarks to Fox News last week. So in response, Menendez stated the president of the United States is on record saying he will not fund the post office because he believes it's in his personal political interest to disrupt and discredit the election process and disenfranchise millions of voters. 
So before we show you the clip, I just wanted to point out that many of you that are following what's developing on the national level, Postmaster General Louis DeJoy, who many have identified as a close ally of President Trump, has suspended any changes to postal service to avoid any impact on election mail. And what he specifically said was, to avoid even the appearance of any impact on election mail, I am suspending these initiatives till after the election is concluded. And some of those initiatives were, you know, getting rid of overtime, uh, getting rid of some uh, mail sorting machinery and other tools uh, that would help alleviate the load, and also uh, many other things as well. So with that, I just want to show you guys the clip, and then we're going to take another break from our sponsors. Senator Bob Menendez called the press conference at the post office in Union City to call on President Donald Trump to halt all actions limiting and hindering the U.S. Postal Service. Just the other day, when asked why he's blocking funding for the Postal Service, President Trump said, and I quote, if we don't make a deal, that means they, the Postal Service, don't get the money. That means they can't have universal mail-in voting. They just can't have it. They just can't have it. The President of the United States is on record saying he will not fund the Post Office because he believes it in his personal political interest to disrupt and discredit the election process and disenfranchise millions of voters. We don't have to cheat to beat Donald Trump. All we're looking for is a level playing field. And Hudson County will lead the way in the state of New Jersey. So thank you for having me here today, uh, Senator. And we are fully in support of, any, of all the measures that you're talking about. We are confident that there won't be any issues with the vote by mail. We just encourage you to get them in early as you receive them. If you're concerned, states are allowed for in-person drop-off at your county clerk or your local board of elections. Look online for your county and find where the drop-off where the drop-offs are. But again, we are confident that you we will be fine with vote by mail. We appreciate the patience and support and continue confidence in the American people. Listen, you can go. Uh, people have been uh, gone to with other people into voting machines. So the system always requires, at the end of the day, vigilance. But the bottom line is, overwhelmingly, millions of people in this country have voted by mail, and they have voted successfully, including the President of the United States. Why is it all of a sudden bad for everybody else, but only good for him? I'm John Idis with Odds County View. Yeah, Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage, let us be your good friend. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. Hudson County View, live at Utcock, John Our Highness. So next, we're going to discuss the New Jersey Supreme Court, specifically their ruling, uh, the Newark Civil Com Civilian Complaint Review Board. Now, obviously, that's Newark, but this is something that has been discussed in Jersey City for many months, and uh, 
this is obviously going to have implications there. And we got the local reactions, uh, including the mayor, uh, Ward E. Councilman, and a couple advocacy groups as well. So before we get to that, though, for those of you that may have missed it, which I imagine is probably not many, but for those of you that may have missed it, let's just talk about exactly what the court ruled. So the ruling, which was 65 pages, says, we appreciate that Newark values having a civilian body participating in the oversight of the police function, but the legislator would have to act in order for the city to have the ability to confer subpoena power on its CCRB. We note that the council, of course, retains its own power to issue subpoenas to call a person before it and to obtain documents unless they are otherwise made confidential by law. The council may be motiva motivated to exercise that power as the result of an oversight report from the CCRB about the performance of the IA, of course, Eternal Affairs, function in Newark, viewed in its totality as the audit it's calls for. So this is something that has been passing uh, through the courts for quite a few years now. Uh, the New York, Newark City Council back in March 17, 2016, uh, passed it audited its that would approve the creation of a CCRB. However, the uh, Newark Fraternal Order of Police, specifically Lodge Number 12, filed a complaint in Essex County Superior Court shortly thereafter. That went to the appellate court. And, uh, you know, neither side has been happy with those outcomes, which led to the Supreme Court hearing. And uh, finally, at the end of the day, the ruling essentially says this, that the CCRB will not be able to have subpoena power, uh, nor will they be able to investigate something that is already an internal affairs probe by the local PD. However, they do have the ability to convene hearings and to uh, introduce any findings or disciplinary recommendations to the public safety director. So, you know, look, without the subpoena power, a lot of people are saying that this is a waste of time, saying that they're disappointed and um, so on and so forth. So let's just get into some of the reactions. So I had a chance to speak with Mayor Stephen Fulop yesterday and let's uh, check, check that out. So he said, I'm disappointed with the state Supreme Court decision is ultimately, we think there should always be a healthy check and balance between law enforcement and civilians. The next step is for Governor Phil Murphy, and the state legislature to formally change the laws and allow a review board so that this decision is not left to the courts. So for those that maybe haven't been following as closely as some others, the reason that there keeps being mentioned to the legislature here is that since subpoena power can't be issued based on the Supreme Court's ruling, the state legislature would have to amend any uh, local legislation, state legislation that would have to do with civilian complaint review boards. And uh, many of you are probably familiar that there is one like that from Assemblywoman Angela McKnight. So that's something, again, that would have to be amended based on this latest decision. But there's plenty of time to do that. I mean, it's only been heard by one assembly committee thus far. So with that in mind, we also heard from, as noted, Wardy Councilman James Solomon. You guys probably know that he has a proposed ordinance that would implement the creation of a CCRB in Jersey City. And uh, obviously he wasn't thrilled with the outcome here. Uh, similar to Fulop, he said the court's ruling is disappointing. It significantly weakens Newark CCRB, harming its ability to establish trust between citizens and their police force. Jersey City's response should be twofold. First, we could continue our work to put the framework in place for a strong CCRB. Simultaneously, we should partner with allies such as Assemblywoman McKnight and Trenton to pass enabling legislation to authorize strong CCRB statewide. We cannot let this moment pass. Now, I know uh, quite a few of you that I spoke with and uh, have also seen on social media attended, uh, participated in a Zoom call that it had the Jersey City Anti-Violence Coalition Movement, Jersey City Together, the ACLU, Councilman Solomon, and many others, but those were the main organizers for this call to talk about the Jersey City CCRB. Uh, this was before, uh, this was organized before the ruling came out though, so uh, that's obviously something to keep in mind, but prior to that, I got a statement from the Jersey City Anti-Violence Coalition Movement and Jersey City Together. And in short, the, you know, they said now is the time for our legislators to act. Assemblywoman McKnight should amend her bill now to ensure that this is possible. So while I didn't have a chance to speak to the Assemblywoman directly, uh, she did put up a Facebook post about this and it said, if municipalities decide it's necessary to create a civilian review board, then subpoena power has to be an option on the table. We will continue to work on legislation that will support communities in their endeavors. So. With that said, I just want to add that uh, we did cover, uh, Corey McDonald specifically covered that Zoom call. And uh, while we weren't quite able to push it out this morning, it was a really busy evening last night, we will have that just a few minutes after this program concludes. So with that in mind, we're just going to go to a quick commercial break. Most women who give birth recover without problems, but any woman can have complications after the birth of a baby. Learn the post-birth warning signs, such as fever, headache, 
chest pain, shortness of breath, increased bleeding, or thoughts of hurting yourself or someone else. Knowing these can save your life or the life of someone that you love. Trust your instincts. If you feel something is wrong, call and get evaluated by your healthcare provider. If your symptoms get worse or you do not hear back from your physician, call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Hannah Pinto Properties, Jersey City. Shape in the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Hudson County View, live at Ed Cup, John Our Highness. So something that's been in the news for a couple of weeks now from the Mile Square City was they were considering, they being the city council, a $250 fine in the event that people were not social distancing and were not wearing face masks outdoors. Well, after a lot of media coverage that included several TV stations and of course HCV, among many others, the council ultimately decided against by a vote of six to three. So that's not really overwhelmingly surprising if you're following Hoboken uh, in any capacity, really. But I think what was a little bit surprising for some people was some of these reactions uh, from the public were really very, uh, very angry, as I noted in the headline there. And uh, I think that's putting it mildly. Some people were, you know, flat out outraged. And um, we're going to show you a clip of one of those speakers. But uh, before we get to that, I just wanted to give you a little more color here. So. The first speaker of the evening, Rochelle Flynn, said, how dare you, our representatives, elected to act on our collective behalf, fine us for any reason, let alone for exercising a human right to breathe fresh air. I realize there are people in our community advocating for this, tattling on their neighbors for breaking the rules. Some would have turned in Anne Frank given the opportunity, but I choose to believe that most grown-ups are capable of living around others whom they have no control. So while that may seem a, a little spicy, if you will. That was actually one of the uh, more respectful and calmer speakers of the evening in terms of uh, folks that were totally 110% against this. So when we were looking at the discussion towards the end when the council was getting ready to vote, this was already near 11 o'clock and actually exceeded 11 o'clock by the time the vote was taken, I just wanted to point out that uh, Fifth Ward Councilman Phil Cohen, the primary sponsor, despite that public outcry, was still urging his colleagues to vote yes. He said, Governor Murphy has been guided by the best science, the best scientists, and he's done a great job guiding us as a state. At this point, it's in this body's hands. Are we going to act to protect folks? And he also suggested the possibility of lowering the fine, amending the ordinance to lower the fine, or even recommending community service uh, in the event that his colleagues thought that would be a better alternative. However, upon questioning from the council, which included uh, First Ward Councilman Mike DeFusco to some extent. We heard from Third Ward Councilman Michael Russo, Fourth Ward Councilman Ruben Ramos. Uh, you know, we eventually heard from Corporation Council Brian Aloya and Acting Business Administrator Jason Freeman that said the task force would be a pretty full body. I mean, it would have class two special police officers, the fire department, environmental services, human services in the recreation department, the zoning officers, and the parking utility. So with all that in mind, and also considering that the police department would have to confer with the Hudson County Prosecutor's Office to issue fines, it just seemed like the council felt that this, was, as a whole anyway, felt that this was too convoluted and it just didn't make a lot of sense. So with all that, I think uh, that was a good time as ever to show you the clip and then we're going to take another short break. Yeah, I want you guys to pay close attention. You know, fascism will not be tolerated here. We are tired of being oppressed. We, the people, demand to be left alone. You are suppressing the people, putting people in fear, subverting the mainstream media with mediated false reality of science with these fake hoaxes to control the minds of the people. No one died, no one cried, hashtag film your hospital. Uh, I know you guys are stonewall, deaf muted. You're putting out these uh, manipulated surveys uh, stating uh, you're feeling safe, you know, it's not about feelings. You know, your feelings does not trump the people with constitutional rights. Fire the city uh, attorney. You know, if you don't feel safe, stay calm. Hey, it's I'm about sorry. Wait, I've put you on mute because you've cursed twice now. No cursing allowed on here. You got one more shot. 
uh, I'm not aware of a, a suppression of the right uh, freedom of speech. It's I not know, freedom of speech. We do have that. You have to have proper decorum in our council rules. If you choose okay. not to, then I'm sorry. I will have thank to remove it. Thank you. Thank Please you. No curse. Uh, I, I wasn't aware of that. You know, if you if you recall the Charles of Nuremberg in Nazi Germany, people were saying they were just taking orders. You know, when 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 all this is un unveiled, the police will be saying that you guys will be saying saying that you are the public servant. You work for the people, not a selective group of people. My family and I will not put on a face diaper out of fear. I will, if I have to, you know, I will accept every every. Uh, Two hundred and fifty dollar threat of coercion and, and put a, a fear. You know, you've been terrorizing our children with, with fake school sh uh, shootings, uh, drills that is required in schools, unconstitutional orders that doesn't hold up. Um, you know, mankind could put up uh, all this bull. Uh, I can't curse. No. I don't know if it's a curse word. Um, pretty, uh putting my children in fear, detrimental my children's health, along with wearing masks. You know, leave us alone, Karens. Don't stop controlling us. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down. That's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lindhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. You know those times when you need to see the doctor, but you just can't get to the doctor? So where do you go? Go to the App Store, download the Telemed app from RWJ Barnabas Health, and you see the doctor right away. From any mobile device, whenever you want, wherever you are. Quality care. No appointment necessary. The doctor is online when you download the Telemed app. Don't you feel better already? RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. That's at County View, live and uncut, John R. Highness. So as uh, also mentioned at the top of the program, I would be remiss if we did not discuss this whole Suez scandal or controversy, whatever you want to call it, from Friday. So as many people in Jersey City recall, in the morning, I think it was 10.30 or so on Friday of last week, the city tweeted out that a boil water advisory was in effect at 3 p.m. on Saturday out of an abundance of caution. And um, Mayor Stephen Fulop also added that an irregularity was found near Christ Hospital yesterday, which at the time would have been uh, last Thursday. So, you know, while that may have been a little inconvenient, I mean, nobody was particularly worked up. I mean, these things happen uh, in Jersey City, Hoboken, Bayonne. I mean, not terribly unusual, right? However, uh, that all took a turn when Suez tweeted at 6.19 p.m. again last Friday that a positive E. coli test in the Jersey City water system had occurred, and they linked to a PDF file showing the initial test was on Tuesday. So obviously people were pretty annoyed that they had been, uh, to put it mildly, that they had been drinking the water for three days without any advisement recommendation, et cetera. So the notification said, on August 11, 2020, we collected a sample from the distribution system. A sample tested positive for E. coli. Additional samples were collected on August 12, 2020, that confirmed the presence of E. coli on the evening of August 13, 2020. These bacteria can make you sick and are especially a concern for people with weakened immune systems. Bacterial contamination can occur when increased runoff enters the drinking water source, for example, following heavy rains. It can also happen due to a break in the distribution system, the pipes, or a failure in the water treatment process. So, you know, certainly I don't think that's something that most people want to read, particularly with everything going on with the current public health emergency. So, as you can imagine, there were a lot of hot takes and most of them were not particularly friendly. But with that in mind, uh, we heard from Wardy Councilman James Solomon on this, and he was calling for the council to have these Suez executives actually testify in front of them, which happens occasionally, but not often. And uh, specifically, he said, the fact that Jersey City just learned of E. coli in our drinking water 72 hours after the initial test and 24 hours after a second positive test was confirmed is unacceptable. City Council must investigate its call Suez water executives before asked to testify. And... We heard from Suez spokeswoman Chari Gold, 
And um, she didn't really give a whole lot of new information, but she did say we immediately contacted the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection and informed them and began taking actions to resolve this issue. We have flushed the system. We have taken additional samples. We have confirmed that the levels of disinfection were appropriate. So we, uh, we heard that. And then we also heard from city spokeswoman Kimberly Wallace Gassion, who was critical of Solomon for quote unquote politicizing the situation. And she said, while the city would be open to hearings uh, or any sort of testimony, they said they want to figure out what exactly happened first. So many people uh, online, particularly on Twitter, were far from uh, happy with this and they weren't willing to give the administration a pass. We uh, looked at a tweet here from Megan Carolyn who said, I'm so sick of living in a city where leadership means let's keep this quiet because it might alarm people and look bad and oh no, the information is out and now it looks even worse again and again and again and again and again and again. Uh, yeah, obviously not very happy. And uh, we heard from the mayor on this uh, a second time, uh, actually multiple times, but the second time he said, we are extremely concerned, extremely disappointed at Suez here, the time lag between when Suez was first aware of the issue with a test result and when they notified the city of a potential issue is absolutely unacceptable. Support of reference, Suez does about 160 tests per month citywide, every month. And this is the first time I could recall any abnormal tests in as long as I have been involved in government. Uh, so for context, if you're not aware, you know, Mayor Phillip was elected to the Wardy Council in 2007. So, you know, it's been a fair amount of time, fair number of years. With that, you know, I don't have a lot of new information on this. I mean, I did speak to a representative for CarePoint Health, who is the operator for Christ Hospital, and they said that Suez informed, informed them of a problem on Wednesday, of course, two days before the boil water advisory, but we really haven't gotten anything further from that. You know, not uh, a topic that many people appear to be conversational on, but when we hear more about this uh, special hearing, or if it's the next regular hearing of the council, and if Suez is going to indeed uh, have representatives testify, we absolutely want you to know and we will keep you abreast on that. Actually, just a quick clerical point. I mean, I said last week I would keep you guys informed about what's going on with the schools. So I just wanted to reiterate in case you missed it that Union City, uh, West New York have committed to an all remote learning uh, school year for September at least. And we know that as of today, uh, Weehawken was still going to do at least uh, one session in person. And uh, we also know that in West Hudson, the schools will be doing remote learning, uh, as well as the Hudson County Schools of Technology. So just, just a very short uh, update, just something that I said I would provide, so didn't want to forget about that. So another thing that I think went under the radar at this council meeting, I mean, these Jersey City Council meetings have made Hoboken look really brief and concise in comparison. I mean, these uh, Hoboken meetings, or sorry, Jersey City meetings are going seven, eight, nine hours, which is... I mean, I'd heard of even by Jersey City standards. But with that, uh, you, we do know that one of the contracts they approved was a $77.5 million waste removal pickling contract with Regional Industries, which is based out of Elizabeth. And uh, one thing that made this kind of interesting, number one, almost the entire council spoke out against this last month, but they approved an emergency uh, deal and appropriation so that you know, the recycling and garbage pickup wouldn't cease to exist or wouldn't stop basically uh, in its tracks. And even after that, there was still only one bid and there really were no alternatives, which is not something that I see very often. We heard from Ward 8 Councilwoman Denise Ridley. She said, I think the council has expressed on numerous occasions throughout the year their displeasure with regional and similar to a recent vote with regional really not having an additional option at the moment, being forced into a corner. While I'm not happy, just like most residents aren't happy with regional service and the constant renewal of contracts, continuation with this company, based off of our conversations at caucus, seems like we don't have any other options at this time. So obviously, uh, speaking of time, we're running a little short, so I'm gonna kind of jump to the end here. We, and uh, Wardy Councilman James Solomon said, this is a failure two years ago, we brought regional in. We all said every single ward said the service is substandard. They announced publicly at a public meeting their promises of better service, including specific action items, and they didn't. then they did nothing. For two years, they didn't act on a single thing. And the council president, Joyce Waterman, said, I think they need to prove themselves because they're just terrible. That's all I could say, they're just terrible. The resolution passed 5-2 to 2 with Solomon and Councilman at large, Velada Lavaro voting no, while the council president and Ward C. Councilman Rich Pagiano abstained. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call it a week. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. Everybody stay safe. And we're actually going to be on a two-week hiatus, so we'll see you in September.